Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only Mr. Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. I just got to ask, what's going on in the multifamily space? I spend a lot of time in residential, and it is clearly a housing depression, uh, less transactions, less building, all those things going on in single family. But I'm curious, you play in a world that I can only look at from afar. Uh, what's going on in the big stuff? Is it is it you know deals getting done, people, buyers and sellers agreeing, frozen? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, the it is definitely slowing down in this market and, and for a lot of the same reasons. I mean, really the prime reason is interest rates, right? Interest rates rising as rapidly as they have just means it's much more difficult for buyers to have these deals pencil out. At the same time, sellers, uh, you know, they've had their expectations raised over the last couple of years and they're anchored to these very high prices and they that's what they want, right? And there's gonna be some time uh, where uh, you know sellers are not going to adjust their sales expectations or frankly may not be able to adjust their sales expectations maybe they have to exit for those numbers uh and buyers are like hey i'm not paying that right sellers are looking backwards buyers are looking forwards they there's no meeting of the mind so i think we're going to have a, a period of the next you know 12 to 18 months of a lot of, of reduced volume reduced sales um, oh, yeah. because, of that, because it's just going to take time for uh, for a new equilibrium to be established around this new interest rate environment. It's funny. That's exactly what I'm telling people in residential. I'm, I'm basically saying we've entered phase two of the housing transaction crash, uh, and it's it's going to run to at least March 15th. Basically, we've got to get through winter. We've got to get to the next spring selling season. Are we in a recession? Is it bad? Where's unemployment? All of these is World War Three started, you know, just all of these things to kind of unpack in the next six months or so. Uh, and again, you know, is, has the Fed paused, have the cut? I mean, there's lots of things going on between now and then. But, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 kind of stuck. And I do think sellers are living in the past and, and buyers are living in the future. And, you know, at least in residential, uh, a lot of folks have fixed rate debt that doesn't change. So there's going to be a lot of people that are just stuck in their homes for years to come because their 30 year mortgage is an asset. Um, so I think by March, what we find is who needs to sell and who right. wants to sell. Uh, is that kind of the same thing in multifamily? I, I think it's very similar. Like I think, you know, the people who have uh, strong assets that are performing well with good debt in place, you know, basically have no reason to sell. Right now, now the only group with within that who will sell are some of the funds who have, fairly rigid holding periods that they have to meet, or they have, you know, their, their, their kind of return expectations are lower because they're managing thousands of assets. So they're just, they're just turning them on a cycle, right? And so those folks may sell, even though they're, there's no reason, you know, that they have to sell, they're not forced into it. But other than those people, you know, People's strong assets will just sit on the assets, wait for the market to come back and, and look to the next peak to exit. The people who are going to sell are the people who have to sell, right? right? For the most part. And those people, as we talked about in the last you know, session, are the people who have to refinance uh, either because uh, you know, the real painful ones will be the people who have to refinance short-term bridge debt, right? At a, in a very different interest rate environment, or people who just, you know, they didn't execute their their value add well, they underwrote long in the first place, they didn't get the kind of rent bumps that they expected. Uh, and now they're gonna have to refinance and interest rates are much higher. And frankly, they're not gonna get the proceeds that they need to refinance. So they're gonna be forced to sell. Um, so we're, I think over the next few months, you're gonna start to see that. And you're gonna start to see a lot of deals were done with two and three year bridge debt starting in even 2019 when prices were, were really high. Uh, but especially in 2020, 2021, 2022. So I think a lot of the, as those, uh, you know, bridge debt, uh, as they mature and people are forced to refinance, you know, it could be an interesting environment for sure. Uh, and I don't, I, I think the big wild card now is how those alternative lenders, the bridge lenders are going to react to this environment. Are, are they in a position to extend and pretend uh, you know, or, or maybe, maybe not even pretend it, maybe they'll just decide like, Hey, yeah. we know that we're not going to be able, we're just going to tur turn these loans over 
uh, because we're going to roll them because we know that our, we can't get out and we need to wait for the market to come back up again for the traditional lenders to be able to step in and lend on these things, right? So, uh, you know, that was their expectation. Their expectation was pe people stabilize these assets, permanent lender comes in, we get our money back, we go lend some more at high interest rates. They may just have to take a step back and say, no, we've, we've got to wait for the market to come back as well. So, uh, yeah. I agree. It's it's going to be very interesting. And again, a lot of this is because the Fed kept rates uh, too low for too long. When you have when you have the return on capital expectation at basically zero, you do unusual things. Either non-QM, non-qualified mortgage lenders sprout out everywhere. They see the ability to get seven, eight percent loans, interest only on a you know historically secure asset, multifamily. That oh, by the way, rents are going up. This it's just kind of all good. And then you get reversion to the mean, as we talked about in episode one, and you're right. I think I think the answer is going to come down. Do they extend it, pretend, or delay, or roll, or do they did they chop them up, a la what happened last time, and they have to foreclose because you know nobody owns enough of it, and and everybody wants their money. So, yeah, it, it, it pains out there. Uh, some of it, it, you know, it's just when does this stuff reset, and do are are there four sellers? It's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, and then, and then you know the the other thing is you're going to have to look at foreclosures, right? Because if, if there start being, if, if, if there are enough foreclosures out there that uh, the, the banks get spooked then they're going to pull back, right? They're going to be demanding a lot. You know, they're going to offer less proceeds. They're going to, you know, offer worse terms. And, and that's just going to squeeze a lot of buyers out of the market, which means prices will come down. And when you do have those for sale situations or those, you know, sort of timing linked, situations, uh, then, you know, you're going to get better pricing on those deals. So those are, that's kind of like the opportunity that's, that's going to come and, and kind of like hearkening back to something we talked about a moment ago. I mean, I think, you know, 2019, we were sort of expecting a regular sort of business cycle, end of the real estate yeah. cycle correction, right? Yep. So it wouldn't be, wouldn't be dramatic, but there'd be a, the traditional sort of softening of the market and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone taking a pause and like, you know, things resetting a bit. Instead, what we got was this crazy run up and now we've got like that you know everyone got high on their own supply and now there's the hangover right and so it's going to be a worse outcome than it would have been if we hadn't had covid make everything really crazy so yeah. um I, I think you're going to see you know partially because people did bad deals at the top but also i think because people's expectations got artificially set high so the hangover is going to be even worse as people, more people are disappointed and the banks are disappointed. Everybody is disappointed. And then you've got some actual pain. Uh, you know, I think, I think it's going to be a worse situation than we would have had in, if we just had a recession in early 2020. No, I think, I think the business cycle is undefeated. I think they, you know, we, we delayed what you and I both saw coming and now we've got to pay up. It's kind of like, you know, that extra drink or that extra drinker shot or two at the, at the bar. It's, it's, it's just. It's exactly like that. It's exactly like when you've had, you know, you've had a few beers and you're feeling good and you're like, I'm going to have another one. And it's always that. Last no, one. it's the last one that like that kills you. Right. You know? Yeah, and exactly, so exactly, exactly. it's, uh, you would have been, you would have maybe had a little hangover the next day, but now you got a big hangover and you know you didn't sleep at all. So now that and you lost four hours of your life and there's a naked picture of you online now. Because you <laughs> don't know what happened. It got all kinds of bad. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting. Again, as we kind of talked about in, in the first episode, I want to hit again. We're we're talking about this is because we 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 see what's coming. We've both been through this. We both have bought assets in the last cycle through this. We see it coming again. We want people to understand that there's lots of opportunity coming. You have to get educated. You have to get prepared. Uh, you actually created a checklist that I think a lot of people need to go download. Where where can people find that? Yeah, no, I mean, if this is, as Michael said, I mean, I think that there's a lot of opportunity coming and, and you know, you always want to be prepared before the opportunity comes, right? Because mm -hmm. when everybody recognizes, it'll be too late. Uh, so you can go to apartmentinvestorsclub.com and uh, you'll find the download there. Uh, it's free. You just got to enter your email address and that'll put you on my email list. So you, get, you hear from me occasionally um, with more news. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's where to go to get it. It's a comprehensive checklist. that kind of covers everything that you need to know from start to finish if you're looking to uh, buy multifamily and even if you want to syndicate deals too. And I got it, uh, an early version of it, uh, I don't know, 
eight weeks ago, maybe it's, it's great. I printed it, consumed it. I learned a lot. So uh, there's a lot in there and I've been in the game 20 some odd years. So very well done if I hadn't told you already. Thanks very much, Mike. You got it.